Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha K Geek XX Chic, and we're back with another reaction. It is to, of course, Titans episode two of season two. So last week we had uh, the season premiere, which consisted of a let's face it, fairly lackluster battle against Trigon, where he was fairly easily defeated in the end by Rachel alone and uh, we had the introduction of what I'm assuming is going to be this season's new villain which is of course Deathstroke. There really wasn't a whole heck of a lot that happened outside of that to be perfectly honest. Um, as I said in the last if you watch my reaction and review to the other um, to the premiere which I will link probably up there somewhere I, there was a little bit of insight into some of the characters and I'm hoping that they're going to build on it throughout the season but outside of that we didn't really get too much happening and so I'm really happy we're on episode two and hopefully we're going to keep this whole thing going and we're going to pick up some momentum as the season goes on. This episode is called Rose and based on what I saw of the trailer for this season, I'm assuming this is another one of the characters that's going to be part of the Titans. We have not seen or heard of anyone named Rose before. So this is a fresh introduction as far as the show. I don't know much about her character in the comics, so my apologies if I say anything that sounds really weird because as any of you know on my channel, you know that I know some stuff about the comics, but I'm not hardcore, so I really appreciate those of you who put all the vital information in the comments and keep me up to, to date with what's going on. And if you haven't been here before, welcome to my channel. Thanks so much for showing up. Please feel free to subscribe and like this video if you uh, want to stay part of the fam and be up to date on all the videos that I release, which are kind of random to be perfectly honest. It's usually based on whatever shows that I'm watching, but... Yeah, hopefully you'll stick around and want to see more. So anyways, without further ado, let's get into this episode. And as usual, we'll chat about it after. Okay? Let's go. Sorry, caveat before we start. You might have noticed in my last video, there was a weird high-pitched noise that was popping in and out towards the end. There is something going on in my building, but unfortunately, there's no, like, ETAs to when it's going to get fixed. So you might hear a high-pitched kind of wheezing sound pop up at some point during the video. My apologies for that. There's absolutely nothing I can do about it. So sorry, I'll do my best. Rock the Casbah. Wow, we went three months. Go. Keep training with Batman Gar. Please do not take this kid as a joke. Wait, does Gar, does Gar actually have any training? Guess we'll find out. Nice. This is the stuff we needed last season. Can we have an episode where Gar does not get beaten up? How about that? Hey, fuck, man. Whoa. Yo, look, it's been three months, man. And? I get to go back to Gotham City. Oh. Bruce doesn't think you're ready yet. Neither do I. That was the, the stipulation. What? Hey, look, here's the thing. I could actually use some help with the others. They don't have the experience you have. Yeah, that's for sure. Stroke that you ego. Look up to you. Follow your lead. When you're on point, they're on point. When you're not, it's true. They need your leadership, Jason. Uh, I hate the sound of knuckles cracking. Wow, that's the most low-budget prison break I've ever seen. <laughs> Did Deathstroke do this? Stop it! No! Oh, so are you electric or tech? So... How do people not figure out that if somebody royally kicked everyone's ass like this, not to just to pretend you're dead? So, dude, you literally just absorbed that power to waste it already. I'm good, Don. You don't have to worry about me. Are you? This feels a little too serene. Chicago! Look at you, new hair. Loving it. Work it, that fit too. Mm hmm. So I thought she was going back to her planet. It's a no go. Did you get any jellies? No one likes jellies. Mm -hmm. Maybe no one Cameron, but he and his love. Her and Donna working together? about it? Is it wrong that I get I immense pleasure like watching really thin friends. girls eat carbs? I was thinking after we wrap, I might head to Florida. I heard those places would actually get to about 50 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, ow. Is she okay? 
She looks like she's about to do some crime. I know that look. Girl, hello? Hello, the devil be creeping without you, girl. You don't wake yourself up right now. Listen, this is why this is why black people ain't in this tower right now, because you just can't have evil just flowing out when you're having a nap. Ooh, ow. Okay, what's this about? Trigon? Or her and Gar getting freaky in a whole new level. He's totally obsessed, right? He's turning into Mr. Miyagi before our very eyes. Hey, Mr. Miyagi is a great sensei. I feel different. Like, I'm not the same person I used to be. None of us are. Well, you know, you didn't have a giant jewel coming out of your head God. a few months ago, so. God, I miss Corey. Me too. Me too. Road trip. Hey! That would be highly unrecommended. But uh, that last time you did it, y'all got captured in like two seconds, so maybe that's a no. Ooh, we got some Fast and the Furious here. Is she okay to drive with one eye? Because I feel like you're missing some, like, depth perception and... Okay, a parkade was probably the worst decision you could have made, yeah. Oh, she's about to mix the cops up! Who the hell is that? A total badass. Oh, Jason's got a crash. Of course he's got a hard on for someone beating up cops. So this all fits the legal definition what? of pollution. What? Damn! Screw your meeting. Is anyone still in the room? Oh, okay. Y'all just paused, huh? Just another day in San Francisco. They're like, so anyways, back to the report. I got other skills. You know? Greater skills. No. Yeah. <laughs> Seem to remember the last time y'all tried this, you had some issues getting your skills to rise to the occasion. So maybe you want to just pull back on all them promises, okay? That looks a weird margarita. Oh, because it's drugs. Okay, yeah, she's about to go mess up some drug dealers. Okay. Yo, go check the fuse box. Why don't you check the fuse box? <laughs> Not today. No. Nope. How about that? Beaker to the. Oh, that's your arm. Ow. Mm hmm. Yeah, those are your balls. Don't do drugs and stay in school, kids. There's a. Matt <laughs> At the way he mumbled! Uh, uh, lab. Going out by yourself like that? I know what I'm doing. With all due respect, Hank, we had an agreement. you kind of always get your butt kicked recently, so she's probably better no off. It's just too dangerous. You don't get to unilaterally make that decision, sir. Too dangerous for you. Oh, I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming, damn! But then it wasn't enough for you, and you found other ways. You're wrong. Am I? That's why I went alone, so that you wouldn't win. Maybe I was. Bullshit, Don. Now this! You were in a coma for a month. Far more interesting. I had to sit by your side wondering if you were gonna die every fucking day. The we ain't walking dove. Is scalding! We're done? We're done. Oh, ultimatum! Oh, he's the light dude got to him. I didn't realize that had a delayed effect. Oh, Alice, I'm sorry. I didn't realize he could make people into like living bombs. We should get together to figure this out. I mean, you don't have a house anymore, Hank. Come on. This is a place where people like you can learn how to be the best version of who you are. And you can do it without being afraid for your life. <laughs> yeah, that... Why are you deluded? Yeah, the, the pitch is okay, Dick, but a little finesse. Or is she a person? <laughs> how does she survive the job? Right? So Gar's like, like, I turn into a tiger. Alien. My vote is to kick her ass out. Whatever, Jason. You have such a hard on for her. Stay. Okay, Corey, there are other people on the street. But... How did I know you'd be awake? Is Does a bat ever sleep? Seriously? Change the name. Why should she? She actually shimmers. I mean, it is lame, but. I mean, you're an intergalactic princess. Why are you eating street food? Oh. 
Call me about full name. Who are you? Just me. I should have sent more. <laughs> Apparently not. Sorry about that, Your Highness. The title she deserves. You didn't need to do this. I'm fine on foot. Really? Because I kind of found you passed out. Yeah. You go. Wait, how does man's powers work? I'm so confused. Smash, identify. Rose Wilson. And that's her dad, Slade Wilson. No. Death strokes are Fuck. daddy? Well, guys, that was the latest episode of Titans Called Rose. And yeah, we just found out uh, what Rose's last name is, Wilson. <laughs> it's, it's the name of great people. A lot of great people, the last name Wilson. I mean, in this particular series, they happen to be villains, but that's not the point. <clears throat> Most of us, pretty okay. Uh, this one was uh, definitely a bit better, I think. I, I enjoyed this episode a little bit more than I enjoyed the premiere. I think we're starting to put a few more layers together and start to build where we're hopefully going to be going as the season progresses. I'm okay when we have storytelling because a lot of shows have done the storytelling when you have people in various places and you kind of have them all spread out and the story kind of goes in like these little sections and then it eventually converges. It has to be kind of done well and I mean I have to say I am happy that they did break it up into different sections of the episode instead of like last season we just had whole episodes that were dedicated to another like group so like hawk and dove or you know donna or whatever the case may be in the past it was kind of like or last season they would have like an entire episode to themselves and i personally was not a huge fan of that because you know i the show's called titans i wanted to see everyone i wanted to check in and see what's going on with dick and what's going on with Corey, and what's going on with rachel and everybody else and having a whole episode where we don't get to really see the people who were kind of the heart of the episode was really frustrating last season so i'm glad that they so far aren't doing too much that this season this episode as i as i said we got a little bit of hawk and dove we got a little bit of titans we got a little bit of donna and um corey so we weren't really in one place for too long i kind of it felt a little choppy in the beginning but i i definitely like the way it kind of came together a little more smoothly towards the end like now I was like, okay, where is this tying in? Because I'm all fine with seeing, as I said, things in separate places, but it needs to kind of have a thread that makes me realize why I'm watching all of it and pull it together. And we're starting to see a little bit of that, a little bit of that towards the end and how this is all going to basically force them to converge back at Titan Tower or wherever it ends up being. So let's talk a little bit about that. I mentioned uh, De Hawk and Dove. Let's talk about them. So apparently they've gone out to the middle of nowhere. They have this ranch. It looks like it was just them and this young boy they called Ellis. That's how they were pl trying to retire from the life of crime fighting. And this kind of, it kind of threw me off for a second because I kind of forgot that last season, really early in the season, we saw that with Hawk and Dove, that obviously Hawk in particular was not doing very well. He's got tons and tons of, ish, of, of injuries. He was addicted to painkillers, like just not doing well in the whole superhero game anymore. And Dawn was like, we need to get out of this. Like we need to get out of this life because you can't handle it anymore, Hank. Like, you know, you're, you're not able to keep up. And I mean, I made a few jabs in the episode and just know, like I was just having fun. Like I, I get that, you know, in the comics, they were a really cool duo, but digressing, Last season we saw Hank was a mess. He just was not able to keep up. You know, Dawn was doing pretty good, but he's clearly, his body is just not up to the level of being able to fight crime the way that he did, I guess, when they first started this years ago. So I understand why Dawn just was like, let's just get out of the game. Let's both of us leave, find a peaceful life, leave this whole vigilante life behind us. I kind of like how the show did the whole, like the syrupy, sweet, you know, hallmark, moments that they had in the beginning of oh we just love being out here in our little wood cabin with our little adopted recovering addict son and we like riding horses and chopping wood and it's so quaint right and it was just like you could just feel and i think the show intentionally made sure it felt super syrupy and super soft and fuzzy like I, you heard me kind of say in the review about how like or in the reaction like you know this is a little too Nice. It's too picturesque. It's too clean. And I think that was the point, is that it wasn't real, right? Um, maybe it was somewhat for Hank, but the reality is as much as Hank and Dove, or sorry, as Hawk and Dove 
are kind of getting to the point where they shouldn't be out there on the streets every night, they're also not the domestic type, you know what I mean? They're just not the type to be able to just sit in a log cabin in the middle of nowhere and drink hot cocoa and reminisce about their their day of pretty much nothingness. Like that's just one extreme to another and neither of them are really healthy. So I like how the show started with it kind of being that way and then we saw later on that Dawn is not really actually able to let go. Like the fact that it was kind of hilarious though that she told Hank that the reason she didn't want to visit Dick was because she was afraid he would slip up. But here she is sneaking out at night still, you know, doing what she usually does. Again, she didn't really quit because she wanted to quit. She was more doing it because she thought that that's what Hank needed. And so, as I said, it kind of got juicy with the two of them when they finally had that fight. And, you know, Hank was, you know, trying to throw out ultimatums. And finally, she was like, you know what? The truth is, I wasn't the one screwing up. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not the one who's, who had the addiction. I'm not the one who is, you know, screwing up in the field or not screwing up. But, you know, I wasn't the one having trouble. You were the one who was kind of falling apart. Like, I'm kind of coming with you on this trip, but I really didn't need to take it. It wasn't really fair of Dawn to be like, oh, because you're not able to handle this life anymore, I'm stuck with it and it sucks. It's a real emotion. It's very realistic. But again, that's something that she kind of signed up for when she said she wanted to stay with Hank. You know, she could have come at that whole situation a little bit better. But, you know, I think she's been chewing on a bit of resentment for a while. And obviously he's had his own, I think Hank's probably been feeling his own version of resentment over the fact that she is still able to do this. And and she's not suffering with the same physical issues that, that he is. And there's gotta be a little bit of maybe jealousy, maybe resentment going on there for him to see that, you know, she could continue in the field when he really can't. So anyways, uh, unfortunately, as we saw, um, the, little, the young man that they were taking care of ended up being a walking bomb to try to kill them, I guess, or send a message one or the other. And uh, this is, I guess, what's going to force them now, like their home in Wyoming is now gone. And whoever, Dr. Light, as they called it, now knows where they are. So staying there doesn't seem like a really smart thing to do anymore. So they're back, or at least I think they're on their way back to San Francisco now so that they can figure out how to deal with this, which kind of brings me to the whole Dr. Light thing. I don't know anything about this villain. I've never heard of him in my entire life. So any information y'all could give me in the comments below, I would appreciate it. And if you could also let me know how his powers work, because we saw in that prison break scene, which we actually don't know who broke him out. That's still a mystery right now. My guess is it was potentially Deathstroke since he was shown last episode and I don't see who else would want him out. But anyway, we saw in the prison, Dr. Light got outside. He saw the fluorescent light, absorbed some stuff. His skin got all tingly. And then he saw that one guard and then he just... I, what I thought was just redirected that energy back into him. Uh, then the guy we saw kind of started lighting up from the inside, then he like, there he exploded. So I thought maybe he had to do the beaming thing, he had to be right there for that particular power to work. But as we saw with Ellis, apparently that's not necessary. Like I don't even know if he needs to be there. It looks like maybe he can delay his power somehow. Like I just, I, I was very confused as to how these things were exploding when he didn't seem to be anywhere nearby and we saw no beam of light or heard anything. Outside of that, onto uh, back at Titan Tower fights. I mean, I kind of liked seeing the fight between Gar and Jason in the sense of, you know, in a show like this, we kind of live for, while of course the character development, character development is important, we also live for seeing the cool stuff. Like let's see the training segments, let's see the, the fights scenarios like those are things that are actually pretty low cost in a show like this like they don't need to use a bunch of cgi and effects for that so i really like seeing the interaction with jason and and seeing how he's trying to kind of mesh with the team and i last episode i remember thinking when bruce said that there was one stipulation to bruce, uh, to dick being able to get titan tower back i didn't really know what it was but obviously it was to take jason with him because clearly bruce is not doing well <laughs> with training jason considering that he's going around you know, riding motorcycles in the house and beating up cops, cops and such. So anyway, Rachel kind of just felt like a weird hovering presence, but I do hope we're going to see more of her trying to use those abilities and being interactive with the group. And then of course the introduction of Rose, we didn't get a whole lot of her this episode and that's fine. And see, this is the other thing I just want to say, like my only minor complaint about this episode, and they did this last season too, is I hate when they name an episode after somebody and they really don't do a lot of focus on that person. Like they did that with the coriander episode last season like they called it Cory Coriander and like she was literally we, we spent maybe seven minutes out of 50 
actually on the subject of Corey. And so this episode is unfortunately a little bit in that vein. Yes, we got to see her in action a few times, but we really think about how much time we actually spent on Rose. She was by no means the, the theme of this episode at all, at all. Like they could have called it anything else and it would have been fine. So I, I really hope they, they stop doing that. I hope this is the only time they do this in this season because if you have an episode that is named after a character, I personally want to see things about that character. I want you to delve a little bit more into that character. You have 55 minutes in this episode, uninterrupted, no commercials. So that's like a solid 55 minutes or so. Please, for the love of God, use them to actually use, do some character development. It doesn't all have to be building this masterpiece of an arc, which is very important, but still, but very interesting to find out who she's running from, why she's running, and I guess we'll figure that out at some point, but honestly, the fact that she's Deathstroke's daughter is going to be, I think, the biggest source of contention in the next episode. So finally on to our girls, Corey and Donna. I love that, you know, the last time we saw Corey and Donna, they were kind of bickering with each other, like they weren't gonna get along. But one of the things I said absolutely has to happen is that they have to get along because they're both kind of badasses in their own way. They're both very confident. They both know how to put Dick in his place when he needs to be. And it's just, they had too much in common. I would have been really upset if it was this um, ongoing, unnecessary bickering between the two of them. So I'm glad to see that they're actually working together. They didn't really explain because at the end of last episode, they kind of made it seem like Corey had planned on going back to Tamaran. So again, I'm hoping that the show will actually explain to us. And now that we saw what just happened in this episode with her being taken out by somebody from Tamaran, we can find out more of why she's so hesitant to return. But the fact that she said that he, they should have sent more people than him says to me that she knows that people are looking for her. Yeah, like she looked like she was prepared to fight. <laughs> she looked like she was ready to run or tell him that she wasn't going anywhere with him. So uh, my guess is that potentially in this version of, uh, of Corey's storyline, she might've run away from home potentially and maybe this guard is here to take her back. And honestly, we didn't really get much on Donna. For being real, this whole thing with Shimmer really just felt like time a time kill, because Shimmer was, let's face it, a bit about as interesting or eventful as the fight with Trigon. It really was kind of a bunch of buildup throughout the episode for a really short battle. I'm hoping that there's gonna be something that's gonna explain why Donna cared about this Shimmer girl and why she's just staking her out and like why her and Corey were even working together in the first place. Anyway, overall, as I said, a better episode. I do like that we are getting more set up as to things that are gonna go on throughout the episode or throughout the season. I'm happy that it sounds like they're gonna be coming together and converging as a group sooner than later. One of the things that's really annoying sometimes when you have a storyline where people are all over the place and they need to come together you sometimes spend, some shows just spend, in my opinion, a ridiculously long time coming up with the catalyst to bring them all together. And I'm glad it seems like that's not gonna be the case here. So overall, guys, like I said, better episode. Feel like we could still turn the, turn the notch up a little bit, but I feel like we are doing a lot of building right now. So I'm really hoping we're gonna be getting a really good payoff for all this patient building up that we've been getting over the last couple of episodes. What did you guys think of this episode so far? How do you think you're feeling about season two? Who do you think came for Corey? And also, please, all the information you can about Dr. Light. Let me know what's going on below. Why do you think that he's after Dick? Do you think he's working with Deathstroke? All that good stuff. Leave that below. You know I love reading it and getting involved in the conversation with you guys. Then if you like this video, guys, please click like. And if you want to see more from this geeky face, please click subscribe. Until next time, see ya.